Good morning. Please. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures. And follow me along in the scriptures, at the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Don't sit there passively, sitting there to be entertained. Please, be, be a Berean for once in your life. What does that mean? Get the scriptures, please. Please, please, for God's sakes, man, woman, get the scriptures. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, of what we're going to be looking at today, okay? Don't just sit there and watch only a few moments and then say, don't judge, while you yourself are judging without hearing the entirety of the matter. That's, that's willful ignorance. That's willful ignorance. And that is what a devil like Mark the Messenger is teaching you sad people who are deceived by that raving lunatic devil. Okay? Please, follow me along. What is a Berean, by the way? Acts chapter 17. Get, get the scriptures. Turn in the scriptures with me. Come on. Come on. What is a Berean? What does it mean to be a Berean? Acts chapter 17, verses 10 on to verse 11. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Where were they coming from? These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Noble. Why were they more noble? Because in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Readiness of mind. They wanted to hear it. They wanted to hear the truth. Do you want to hear truth? Or do you want to have your ears tickled? Or your ears itched? Do you want to hear smooth things? Peace of blessing. Peace of blessing. Have scripture flashed at you really fast so you can't comprehend. And have sublime, unquestioning, unwavering trust in the one who is speaking to you without checking them out yourselves. That's dangerous. That's very dangerous. These, uh, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. They wanted to hear truth. And searched the scriptures daily, whether these things, whether those things were so. That's what it means to be a Berean. Check me out. Especially with what we're going to be talking with about today. Okay? The lost tribes, hmm, the lost tribes. Hmm. Who lost them? Hmm. This video is actually a response onto a comment. Um, the individual who left the comment came peaceably. And he came peaceably, treated him peaceably. Absolutely. And this video is not an attack on the person, spirit, soul, and body who left the comment. It is addressing what was said in the comment, and you'll see it in the previous video. Okay? The, and the individual, he tried to respond to my comment within his comment, and YouTube would not let the comment uh, come up. I checked the, uh, uh, the comment thing on the YouTube studio, you know, where it says help for review. The only thing that I have blocked for that kind of stuff is if people use profanity, I have certain words. If you use certain words, your comment is not going to show up. But this person didn't do anything like that. YouTube just wasn't letting this person's response onto my response come up. Very interesting. Very interesting. But this individual commented 
about the lost tribes, basically. And that we are right now, that the lost tribes are now being revealed who they actually are around those lines. And it's like, wait a minute, they're, wait a minute, lost tribes? We don't know who, what the lost tribes are? Well, we don't know who is of the lost tribes, right? That, dear friend, is the fruit of a lying devil Hamite who's telling you he's a Hebrew. He is not a Hebrew. He is a liar. He is against the truth of Scripture. Okay? That is the fruit of Mark the Messenger. Okay? That is the fruit of Mark the Messenger. People say, oh, he, he uh, inspired us to get a Bible. That's what they say. Okay, but how do you read that Bible? Hmm? And it's the scriptures, by the way. And he uses the scriptures in his videos with his scriptures that he flashes at you. Okay, but how do you read the scriptures? See, you have to rightly divide them. That's one of Mark the Messenger's biggest problems, besides that he's a lost devil leading people on to hell. Okay, all right. He says, study to show thyself approved unto God. He stops. He doesn't quote the rest of the verse. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, that is the fruit. This, this debate about the lost tribes is the fruit of those claiming to be Jews and are not. That is the fruit. And see, turn in your authorized version to the scriptures. One verse to start here. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Just one verse. Just one verse. Verse 33. Verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Apparently, there seems to be a confusion about the lost tribes of Israel. What are those lost tribes? Who makes up those lost tribes? Hmm? Who makes up those lost tribes, right? God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Okay? You want to know who make up the lost tribes of Israel? Um, you, you do read the scriptures, right? The scriptures tell you who makes up the tribes of Israel. What are the tribes of Israel, friend? The scriptures, even a Bible, even a Bible. I, yes, this says Holy Bible on it within the pages. It never calls itself the Bible. It calls itself the scriptures or the word of God. Okay? Okay, I'm a stickler on that and I'm not dropping that. Okay, but even in a Bible, like the NIV, the New King, non King James Version, the ESV, or New American, whatever. Even in a Bible, you can find out who makes up the tribes of Israel and what the tribes of Israel actually are. There is no confusion. But when you got someone who is not of any tribe of Israel coming around trying to usurp, saying that they are Jews and they are not. Hence comes confusion. And God is not the author of confusion. And see, what devils like Mark the Messenger does is Genesis chapter 3. Turn there, please. Come on. Come on, what's the matter with you? Come on, what is the matter with you? When you've got enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ who are willing to sit and listen to my annoying voice for over two hours, why can't you Christians... Do the same thing. Why? You know, it's this. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Yea, hath God said. Did God really say that? 
I have to make this about Mark the Messenger because the individual who commented this was obviously influenced by Mark the Messenger. Look, look at me. Look at me. Come on. Mark the Messenger is not a Hebrew. He is not. He is a Hamite. I'm not a Hebrew. I'm of Japheth. I'm a Japhethite. Those of Shem, not all of those of Shem are Hebrews. But see, the Hebrew is derived of Shem. Okay? The Lord had me to do a video, two videos, about what a Jew actually is according to Scripture. Okay? Collectively, that's about four hours worth of video where we go through Scripture upon Scripture upon Scripture proving through the Scripture's absolute truth. Absolute truth. Proving through the Scripture's absolute truth what a Hebrew, a Jew is. Now see, a Jew scripturally is someone who keeps the law. Ah, shut up. Wait. Shh, wait, shut up. Scripturally, someone who keeps the law is a Jew, according to Scripture. Okay? You see, yes, in the book of Esther, there are those who became Jews because of the fear of Mordecai. Okay? Those who keep the law. But see, the thing you have to remember, dear friend, who was the law given on to? Who was the law given on to? Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Just two verses. One and two. Romans chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? And see, devils like to confuse what a Jew is. A Jew is someone who keeps the law. Yes! Yes! But see, according to Scripture, according to Scripture, Scripture refers to the Jew as someone who keeps the law. But who was the law given on to? Romans 3, 1 and 2. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them, the Jews, who are who? Hebrews. Hebrews. Because unto them were committed the oracles of God. And the Hebrew begins with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word Hebrew first appearance is in correlation with Abraham. Abraham was called out. He was Shemetic of the kindred of Shem. Of Shem. Okay? He was called out of Shem so the Lord may establish the Hebraic line with the fathers being Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel. Okay? Okay? It, okay? A Hebrew is someone that is descended from Shem of the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mark the messenger is not a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is not. I, it doesn't matter if you have three-tenths Hebrew blood in your veins. It doesn't matter. He is descended of the tribe of uh, not the tribe, of the kindred, excuse me, of the kindred of Ham. He's not a Hebrew. He's a liar. He, as far as someone trying to keep the law, okay, but he's not a Hebrew. He's not a Hebrew. Okay? Now, we go through this in depth in the two videos, What is a Jew? It's not my problem. If you aren't going to take the time and watch those videos, okay? That's not my problem. That's your problem. The truth has been given you. Absolute truth from the scriptures has been given you on this subject. It is not my fault if you are too lazy and don't want to take the time to 
Search the scriptures whether these things are so. That's not my fault. That's your fault, okay? My job, as it were, is to give you the scripture. I can't hold a gun at your head and force you to receive that truth with readiness of mind. I can't. That's on you. Okay? That's your fault. And it is a shoe of your ignorance, willful ignorance, if you don't want to go and search the scriptures yourself. Because like I've been alluding to, that video that the Lord had me to do on Mark the Messenger, only the average watch time on that video is nine minutes. You, 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 don't, even, you don't even get the outer crust of the bread of the sandwich on that, on the top layer in nine minutes. And then people ignorantly, willfully ignorantly, come around and say, and quote, Matthew chapter 7 without searching the scriptures. You're not noble. Okay? It is folly and shame unto you. Okay? It's not my problem if you don't want to hear truth. It's not my problem. We are in the last days where people are lovers of their own selves. The time has come when people will not endure sound doctrine. It's not my fault. It's not my problem. My thing, what I am to do is to give this to you. Whether you will hear or whether you will forbear, it's not my problem. It's your problem. Now, we have addressed what a Hebrew actually is. The links will be in the description box. If you don't want to watch them, that's your problem, not mine. Okay? Okay? But also this thing about the lost tribes, the lost tribes, like they're lost. Who lost them? Did God lose the uh, 12 tribes of Israel? Hmm? Does God not know where they are? Well, we don't know who is associated with the 12 tribes of Israel. The Hebrews are the 12 tribes of Israel. The Hebrews that came of Shem came of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is no such thing, my friend, as a lost tribe. See, that, that's the fruit of Mark the Messenger. Yea, hath God said, casting confusion. Okay? And hence, that confusion that comes from Satan on this issue leads to ridiculous things as British, uh, Brizraelites, as my brother coined the phrase. Brizraelites. What's that? British Hebrew Israelites. People like that scoundrel, those scoundrels from Shepherd's Chapel, Chapel teach. The serpent seed doctrine. Okay? That's a basis, a foundation for this heresy of the lost tribes and stuff like that. Okay? There's this thing that the lost tribes of Israel are over there in England. You're crazy. You're crazy. There is no... Look at me. There is no such thing as a lost tribe. There are lost sheep. But there is no lost tribe of the children of Israel. And Satan uses that confusion to promote heresy, to speak against the absolute truth of Scripture. Okay? Dear friend, you have been deceived by a devil. You have been deceived by a devil who is a kindredist. The worldly term is racist. Who wants to tell you because he is a Hamite, he is a chosen one. Not true. Not true. Nor am I a chosen one, being of Japheth. But Japheth are the Europeans. The Hamites are those associated in the African region, such as the Egyptians. The Shemites, those who dwell in tents, okay? Such as the Asiatics, the Japanese, the Chinese, the Koreans, the American Indian. You know those in Portugal, Peru, and Mexico, okay? Indigenously, I believe they trace back to Ham, 
Because you have the pyramids in Portugal. You have the pyramids in Peru. You have the pyramids in Mexico. Okay? And you got to remember, what happened was the conquistadores came and mixed. But the, like the Aztecs and stuff like that, builders of the pyramids. The pyramids were indigenous unto who? The Egyptians. The Egyptians are of Ham. Okay? Whereas Shem, those who dwell in tents. Okay? Okay? All right. And you might be saying, well, what about the, you know, the Ishmaelites? They're a breed between um, Ham and Shem. But see, the Ishmaelites have yoked themselves up with the Babylonian Hamite religion. Okay? The Babylonian doctrine of, of Catholicism because their religion is uh, Islam. Islam, which was created by Mystery Babylon. Okay? And Timothy. Timothy, who was a mixed breed of Japheth and Shem. But yet he was brought up in the religion, the tent of Shem. Okay? See, the Ishmaelites, well, yes, they are part Hebrew. Yes, they are. And part Ham. Yes, they are. But see, on the most part, not everyone, not every Ishmaelite, not every Ishmaelite is within the religion of Ham, Islam. Ham. Ham. From Ham stems Babylon. Okay? All right? And you might be saying, well, Brad, you're, 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 you're a kindredist against Ham. No, I'm not. That's absolute truth. And if you were a Berean and searched the scriptures yourself, you'd know that. And if you would rightly divide the word of truth, you would know that. But no. You don't. You don't. And incidentally, in Acts chapter 8, who was the first one who Philip went to who was not a Jew, a Hebrew, an Ethiopian, a Hamite? That's over 22 minutes. And those of you sad disciples of that wicked devil can't handle this much. Now let's, if you've made it this far, let's get to the scripture. The lost tribes, there's no such thing as the lost tribes. What has happened? What has happened? First of all, the word tribe, according to Strong's Concordance, appears 242 times in the scriptures. 19 of those occur occurrences, according to Str uh, the Strong's Concordance, 19 occurrences of the word tribe appear in the New Testament. But only two of them, only two of them in the Pauline epistles. The very first appearance of the word tribe, we go to Exodus chapter 31. We're not going to be um, focusing on the word tribe. We're going to be focusing on the plural tribes. But what is a tribe? Okay. Exodus chapter 31, the very first appearance of the word tribe in the authorized version of the scripture. Okay, Exodus 31, we are going to be utilizing what is known as the law of first mention. What is that? Usually, the first time a certain word appears in scripture, it is defined and can be defined throughout the scripture according to the context. Context is the definition of the word. But see, the law of first mention, it doesn't say law of first mention in scripture, yes. But the law of first mention, the first time a word is mentioned in scripture, usually that's the definition of that word. But then again, you got to remember, context defines the word in its entirety. Okay? But for tribe, this is very simple. What is a tribe? What is it associated with? Okay? Exodus 31, verse 12. Just one verse. Just, uh, just one verse <clears throat> oh one second please Exodus 31 verses 1 and 2 I accidentally put 12 I forgot to put the dash there Exodus 31 verses 1 and 2 
Here's the very first appearance of the singular word tribe. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bazaliel of the the son of Ur, of the the son of Ur, Ur, excuse me, the son of Hor, of the tribe singular of Judah. Judah. Is it not evident that our Lord sprang from Judah? Okay. One of the firstborn, uh, one of the children of Leah. Leah. Okay. Okay. So the word, singular word tribe, first appears in Exodus 31, verse 2. I forgot to put the dash. It's verses 1 through 2. Exodus 31, verse 2. There's your first appearance of the word tribe, singular, in Scripture. And look with what tribe is associated with. Judah, okay? Judah, all right? And in the New Testament, in the New Testament, the singular, the plural word, tribes, does not appear in the Pauline epistles. Hmm. The word tribe does, but let's see the reference, okay? Romans chapter 11, Romans chapter 11, which proves that God is not done with his people Israel, the Hebrew, the Jew, okay? Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. Now, look at this. For I also am an Israelite, Israelite, of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe, singular, of Benjamin. A Hebrew of the Hebrew. Okay, now here's the second appearance in the Pauline epistles, wherein the doctrine specifically for us today in this dispensation is found. Okay, Philippians chapter 3, 1 verse, verse 5. Okay, and look at this context. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law of Pharisee. So the first appearance of the word, singular word, tribe, is in relation to Israel. Who are Israel? They are Hebrews. Who are Hebrews? Those who were taken out of Shem. I'm not a Hebrew. I'm of Japheth. Mark the messenger is not a Hebrew. He is of Ham. Okay? A Hebrew is someone who is, number one, from Shem, but of the descended line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all explained in those two videos, what is a Jew? If you do not watch them, that's your fault. Okay? Now, tribes, plural, appears in the authorized version of the scriptures according to Strong's Concordance, 113 times and only seven times in the New Testament. Okay? Only seven times in the New Testament. Not once in the Pauline epistles. Hmm. Interesting. We'll touch on that in a little bit. But the very first appearance of the plural word, tribes, appears before the singular word, tribe. Isn't that interesting? Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49, verse 28. Genesis chapter 49, verse 28. Come on. You brought this up, by the way, dear friend. Thank you. And it's my, it is incumbent on me, it is my duty to set this record straight. There is no such thing as a lost tribe of Israel. There is no such thing. That's a lie. Genesis chapter 49, verse 28. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is it, that their father spake unto them and blessed them, every one according to the blessing he blessed them. According to his blessing he blessed them. Okay? So again, 
tribe, tribes, association with Israel, Judah, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, the tribes of Israel. Okay? From Shem, not Ham and not Japheth. That's why you got those who are Shemites, such as the Japanese and the Chinese, but they're not Hebrews, but they're of Shem. The Hebrews came out of Shem. It's Shem's tent. Okay? Okay? Abraham was Shemitic. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were Shemitic. Not Hamite or not Japhethite. Okay? Now, Deuteronomy chapter 13, uh, 32, excuse me. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Search the scriptures whether these things are so. Deuteronomy chapter 32. We are going to be reading verses 15 on to verse 27. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 15 on to verse 27. But Jeshurun, highly favored, waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock, capital R, of his salvation. Who is this addressed to? The Jews. Who are the Jews? Scripturally, Hebrews. Hebrews, taken from the line of Shem, taken out of Shem, and established by God to establish the Hebraic line. Okay? All right? They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to gods, to gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them, because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. Gentiles. Okay? I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Foolish nation. Gentile nations. Okay? Okay? For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischief, mischiefs upon them. Who is the them? Israel. The Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger. And these are references unto what happened in the Holocaust of the Jew. The Hebraic people. Okay? They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts after them with the poison of serpents, with the poison of serpents of the dust. And it is surmised that Cyclone B, the gas that they used in the gas chambers, were derived from the from were derived from snake venom. Go figure that. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. I said, right here, I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Scatter them. Scatter them. What does that mean? It's called the diaspora. Because the Hebraic people did not keep the law, couldn't keep the law, but they went after other gods, as we have just read, and as a consequence of them not holding to the law that was given to them, the law of Moses, they would be scattered amongst foolish nations, Gentile nations. 
Okay, It's referred to as the diaspora, where God scattered the children of Israel as judgment for not doing uh, for not keeping the law. Brad, you say no one can keep the law perfectly. No one can. But what happened? You, you look at the Pharisees. Even you heretics are quick to note of how the Hebraic people did not keep the law. You have the testimony of the prophets and of the kings. You have the scriptures to tell you how Israel was had failed at keeping the law. Okay? All right? We got that, right? But let's continue. Verse ten, uh, 27. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy. Now God is not afraid of the enemy. But what is he talking about? Let's look. Lest their adversaries should, have, should behave themselves strangely. And lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. The enemy can only do to you what the Lord allows. Those of us who are of the church of the living God. The enemy can only do to his, the apple of his eye, the Hebraic Jewish people of Israel. The enemy, Satan, can only do what God allowed him to do unto his people. The book of Job, perfect example. Perfect example, okay? Satan can only afflict those of the Lord whom the Lord allows him to afflict and so much, and so, and whatever measure, okay? So, what he's talking about was that the enemy might say, well, because I'm so great, I did this to these people. No, the Lord allowed the enemy to do that unto his people. That's what verse 27 is talking about, okay? He sold them over. He gave them over unto a foolish nation, Gentile nations, nations that the law was not given unto. Okay? That's what that's talking about. This is also echoed in Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26. And we will be reading verses 27 on to verse 33. Okay? This is also talking about the diaspora, the scattering of the children of Israel for disobeying, for not keeping the law. Leviticus chapter 26, verses 27 on to verse 33. And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, contrary against the law, okay? All right? They forsook the law and went after other gods, okay? All right? Then will I walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat as a form of judgment. And they did that. You can read about that in the book of Kings. When the one king, I forget which king it was, when he walked on the wall and he had sackcloth under him, and the two uh, whores uh, said to him, Lord, uh, help us, or... Thou, O king, help us. And he's like, how can I help you? And they talked about how they boiled the one son and ate him. And then that they were going to boil the other one. But yet the one uh, went and hid it. And the king rent his garment and said, God do so more unto me and so more if the head of Elisha, the prophet, stay on him until this day or something like that. That's incredibly brad eyes. But see, that was a judgment against the children of Israel. And in the siege of Jerusalem, they also resorted to cannibalism. Their children that they made idols out of, they ate them. Okay? This is the God of the Old Testament, which is also the God of the New Testament. One God comprised of a spirit, soul, and body, just like you and I. We're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body, okay? Okay? Verse 30. And I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols and my soul shall abhor you. Yeah, God has a soul. Yeah. Abhor, extreme hate. And I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. And I will, I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. And I will bring the land into desolation. And your enemies which dwelleth therein shall be astonished at it. 
and I will scatter you, the diaspora, scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out the sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. And you can see the results of the diaspora today. There are legitimately Hebraic Jewish people in McHenry County. There, I don't care what nation under heaven you are in. There's this crazy charismatic who once believed that there are no uh, Hebrews by him in Australia. Uh, there are. There are Hebrews in Australia. There are Hebrews in Iceland. There are Hebrews in um, Croatia. There are Hebrews in Russia. In Canada, eh? There are Hebrews spread out all over the world. Okay? There are. Okay? And on that, the diaspora, the spreading out as a form of judgment onto the Hebraic Jewish people for not doing, and for not keeping the law, okay? For going contrary and setting up idols, which are always a little statue. Never, never anything of the construct of their own imaginations. No, it's always a reference onto a uh, statue. <laughs> yeah. Zekiel, right, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But see, in that, Satan comes in with, yea, hath God said. So then we, we aren't able to decipher who's actually a Hebrew, right? Because they're all spread out. Have you ever witnessed unto the Jewish people? The Hebraic people that descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Most Jewish people that you will meet will be able to at least in one way or another be able to trace what tribe they descend from. Okay, Especially when you talk with the Hasidim and those that go into the synagogue. Okay, They will be able to... Uh, there are, I've met Jewish people who can trace their lineage right back to 1 Chronicles within the first 15 chapters. Okay? Beg your pardon. I've met Jewish people who can put their genealogy directly in Scripture. That's why that's there, by the way. You'll read First Chronicles, right? The first 15 chapters, which are just the names, okay? Um, that's what that's there for, okay? The Hebraic people are able to trace their lineage back onto the Scriptures, okay? All right? So... They might not at present like, well, I don't know what tribe I descend from, but they would find out, okay? All right? Okay? But see, salvifically today, salvifically today, that's another thing, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself on this, okay? But true Jewish people, those who are descended of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hebraic people, they can trace their lineage back to Scripture. And a lot that I have encountered can and have done that. Okay? They can and have done that. All right? Now, go to Jeremiah chapter, what is that, a 7 or a 9? I think that might be a 7. Bear with me. Jeremiah chapter 7, I'm going to say. It might be a 9. We'll find out. Jeremiah chapter 7. We want verses 12 on to verse 16. Let me see if this is the one. Yes, it's a seven. Jeremiah chapter seven, verses 12 on to verse 16. Okay, the book of Jeremiah, which is the prophecy of Jeremiah, but for a while the children of Israel were being assaulted by King Nebuchadnezzar, and Jeremiah was telling the people of Israel to submit unto captivity because captivity is coming. You can compare a lot of what is going on in the book of Jeremiah onto today. A lot of it, okay? But Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 12 on to verse 16. But go ye now unto my place where, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. Israel, Jacob, from Isaac, from Abraham, out of Shem. Okay? 
And now, because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not. And I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. Wherein ye trust, note that. There are those out there, and this is what these devils are preaching, like Mark the Messenger. He is telling you, because he is black, that means he has an automatic in with God. Because he's telling you he's a Hebrew. He's not a Hebrew. Or you got these wicked Brizraelites, British Israel, uh, British Hebrew Israelites over there in London. This, this is an actual thing that exists. Okay, I think I've encountered a couple of them, actually, who, you know, because they're British, because they're English, they have an in with God. They don't. Because you're of Shem doesn't automatically gain you an in with God. Even if you're a Hebrew, it doesn't automatically gain you an in with God. Today, especially. Okay, it doesn't work like that. See, Look at that, verse 14. Therefore will I do this unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust. They were, they were trusting in the actual physical temple, not the God who filled the temple. Okay? They were trusting in the name, but yet not having faith on whose name that was. That was. Okay? It's one name to spout off the name of Jesus Christ, dear friend. What Jesus do you believe on? That's, that's the kicker. That's the kicker. Okay? So let's continue. Verse 15. And I will cast you out of my sight. They were still, this was in the time of Zedekiah and stuff like that. This was the last ditch effort. Nebuchadnezzar was knock, knock, knocking on their door. Okay? About to wipe the snot out of Israel. And they were given a chance. They could not go back. They could not go back. They were going, they had to be punished. But the severity of that punishment could have been lessened if Israel would have laid down their arms and submitted to God's judgment. But they didn't. But they didn't. And as a result, and I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole tribe of Ephraim, Okay, and what are we reading to? Verse 16. Therefore pray not for thou, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Why? Because they have made their choice. They made their choice. They had gone past the point of no return. Even though the Lord in his mercy and charity and kindness was giving them opportunity up to the very end even when he knew that these people had gone past the point where they could not come back. They had gone past that point. It was much far, more farther for them to return than for them to keep going on in their evil. That's, that's a warning for you who are deceived by this Mark the Messenger. That's a warning that some of you need to really take. Because the more you fall for that devil's lies farther and farther and further from truth you are going to go. And I know, too especially, who have gone past, way past that point of no return, you don't want to get to that point, dear friend. No amount of religiosity is going to save you. Christ himself saves you. Okay? And this thing about the law, you don't, we've talked about that in depth in many videos. It's your problem and fault if you don't want to hear them. Okay? Now, let's go to Ezekiel. This is, this is the bread and the butter of all this. Okay? Now, of course, Jeremiah was there when Jerusalem was taken and fell. And hence, Israel goes into captivity for 70 years. And then God brings back the children of Israel. But here's the thing. Israel was still under occupation. Okay? During the times of Jesus Christ, 
Israel was under Roman occupation. Okay? The last king of Israel, as I recall, was Zedekiah. Okay? And that was a bad king. But see, during the times of David and Solomon, and also a little bit of Rehoboam, okay, was Israel known by the allotted 12 tribes that made up Israel. Because see, you, read, you look in the, ma the maps in Scripture, scripturally allotted Israel is a lot bigger than Israel that is today. And Israel that is today is not defined by the 12 tribes, is it? No, it is not. Nor was it defined by the 12 tribes during the time of Jesus Christ. Why? Because they were under Roman occupation. Okay? They were under Roman occupation. And today, when in 1948, when God brought back Israel in unbelief, and we're going to look at that, it wasn't established according to the tribes, was it? No, because Israel was back, brought back in unbelief. Okay? So, Israel at present is not defined as it is known right now as the allotted tribes, as it was under the reign of David, Solomon, and even some of Rehoboam. But it will be when the king of the Jews, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, comes back at his second coming with those of us who are redeemed, who go up before the time of Jacob's trouble, which Mark the Messenger preaches against. Okay? Ezekiel chapter 12, verses 13 on to verse 15. My net also will I spread upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare, and I will bring him to Babylon. Babylon of Ham. Babylon has, is Hamitic. Not Japheth, not uh not Japhethite, but Hamitic. Okay. And I will bring him to Babylon, to the land of the Chaldeans, yet shall he not see it, though he shall die there. And I will scatter toward every wind all that are about him to help him and all his bands. And I will draw out the sword after them. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall scatter them among the nations and disperse them in the countries. Okay? And that has happened. That has happened today. They have been dispersed. I don't care where you live. Somewhere by you, there is a congregation of Jewish Hebraic people. Okay? That's what the scripture says. That's why there are Hebrews in Iceland. There are Hebrews in Australia, mate. Okay? Happy to break it to you. All right? There are Hebrews in England. Hebrews. There are Hebrews like just several miles away from me. Okay? All right? As a result of the diaspora. And see, in that... The scattering, Satan comes in, well, you don't know which one is actually a real Jew of what tribe they are. That's not true. That's not true. You go to these synagogues. Have you ever been to an actual Hebraic Jewish synagogue before? And talked with them? Hmm? Hmm? They care more about their genealogy than they actually do the absolute truth of Scripture. They do. Okay? Now, Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. Okay? Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 12 on to verse 16. Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 12 on to verse 16. Okay? In thee have they taken gifts to shed blood. Thou hast taken usury and increase, and thou hast great greedily gained of thy neighbors by extortion. And has forgotten me, saith the Lord God. Talking about Israel. Behold, therefore, I have smitten mine hand at thy dishonest gain, which thou hast made, and at thy blood which, has, which hath been in the midst of thee. Can thine heart endure, or can thine hands be strong in the days that I shall deal with thee? I, the Lord, have spoken it, and will do it. He dealt with them during the Holocaust. And he will deal with them again, 
during the time of Jacob's trouble. Erroneously referred to as the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation. It doesn't appear in Scripture. I don't think it even appears in a Bible. Okay? It's the time of Jacob. Who's Jacob? Israel. Who are Israel? Hebrews. And who are Hebrews? Descended of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And where did Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob descend out of? Shem! Verse 15. And I will scatter thee among the heathen, and disperse thee in the countries, and will consume thee, consume thy filthiness out of thee. And thou shalt take thine inheritance and thyself in the sight of the heathen, Thou shalt know that I am the Lord. So again, this thing about the diaspora. Okay? The thing about the diaspora. You go to a Seder dinner and ask, do you know what tribe you are actually descended from? It's like, well, I don't know precisely, but I could find out. It's like, I know you could. I know you could. Or you ask one, do you know what tribe you are descended from? Uh, yeah, my ancestry goes back to Naphtali. Really? Or I'm, my descendants are actually descended of Levi. Really? The Hasidic rabbi who I speak to in Chicago. It's like, well, yes, my descendants are traced back to Levi, of course. Levitical priesthood. Okay? Okay? See, the Hebrews do that. The actual Hebrews can do that. Not all of them. I mean, most Jews that who are who are actually Hebraic people, um, you was like, do you know what tribe you are from, descended from? Like, man, I don't know. You could find out pretty easily. How? Go to your rabbi. Go to your rabbi. Hmm? Look in the lineage of your people. All right. For the Jew, there's no there's no confusion. According to scripture, who is actually a Hebrew, who is actually a Jew, it is Satan, yea, hath God said, through the diaspora, because they're spread out. They're spread out. All over. Aren't they? They are. Yes, they are. And Satan uses that to his advantage. Well, because they're spread out, we don't know who is of Judah. We don't know who is of Ham, of uh, Japheth, or whatever. Excuse me. We don't know who is of Judah. We don't know who is of Gad, Ashur, Naphtali. Okay? Japheth, Ham, they're not of Israel. Okay? Excuse me for saying that. But you know what I'm saying. See, Satan uses that to his advantage. To cast confusion. When it comes to Scripture, there is no confusion. Okay? You can trace your lineage back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Culturally, physically, bloodline like, you're a Hebrew. Okay? Mark the Messenger is not a Hebrew. I am not a Hebrew. Okay? You, some of you weird German people, not all of you Germans, bless your hearts. There are some of you who are closet, closet Nazis. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. Some of you German people that are closet Nazis. Yes. Not all of you. Bless you, saved, true brethren of the Church of the Living God of Germany. Okay? Some of you German people who wanted it to be the German Catholic Church. Uh, you're, you're not Hebrew Israelites. You're not Hebrews. Okay? Deal with it. Now, let's go to the big one. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. We want verses 1 on to verse 11. Okay? Now this is talking about Israel being brought back in unbelief. Okay? Israel 1948. Israel was brought back in unbelief. Oh, they claim to believe in Hashem. Ha, the, Shem, name. Hashem, the name. Okay? That's what that means. Okay? Ha, Shem, the name. They claim to believe in Hashem. But if they truly believed on Hashem, they would believe, obviously, on the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, the promised Mashiach, the son of David, king of the Jews. Okay? So Israel was brought back in unbelief. 
Okay, You read Night by Eli Wiesel, and you look at Israel, the Hebraic people, before the Nazi time, before they were taken to the concentration camps, what were they doing? They were studying the Kabbalistic arts. Okay, they were they were doing the stuff. Uh, they were studying their Talmud, which the original, I believe it was the Jerusalem Talmud. I think the Babylonian Talmud was written for the Goyim to ingest, while the uh, Jerusalem Talmud is for the Hebraic people. The original writings of the Talmud said that Jesus was in hell being boiled in excrement. They have since expunged that. Okay, they have, trying to cover their tra uh, tracks. But during the Nazi time, they were uh, reading their Talmud and getting involved in Kabbalistic stuff. Today, right now, with the weird Noahide laws, Israel today, Kabbalistic, studying the Talmud. Another Holocaust is coming for the true Hebraic people. And hey, you wicked wannabe Hebrew people who are not, who say you're Jews and you're not, why aren't you going to Israel for to be with your people then? Hmm? Why, why aren't you uh, on the farm raising your red heifers for sacrifice? You say you got to keep the law today. Good. Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 1 unto verse 11. Also thou son of man prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Mountain here, reference unto people. Okay? Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy has said against you, Aha! Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy among the, um, an infamy of the people. And when Israel was, uh, came to pee today in 1948, where was that carved out of? And the land since was inhabited by the sons of Ishmael, okay, the Palestinians, okay, which is the allotted land unto the Hebraic people, promised to them by God, a lot bigger than what they have today, okay. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and to the hills, and to the rivers, and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey, and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen, and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Okay? Remember what we looked at in Deuteronomy? I feared the enemy because he would say, I have done this when the Lord allowed them to do that. He's, God's not afraid of anything. <laughs> yeah. But that the enemy doesn't exalt himself saying, well, I, I did this. No, the Lord allowed you to do it. That's why part of the reason why Israel was brought back in unbelief. Because the Palestinians, those at that uh, time, uh, before 1948, and after the Holocaust of the Jew, okay, God had mercy for his name's sake. Israel was brought back in unbelief. They didn't accept their Mashiach as a nation. There are individual Hebrews, praise the Lord, who, yes, who actually believe on their uh, Mashiach, Yeshua, sure, absolutely, yes, okay, yes, yes, but as a nation, no, no, okay. <clears throat> Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of, of all the heathen, 
and against all Idumea, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, and with the spiteful minds who cast it out for a prey. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. Actually, dear friend, it's a more dangerous thing to defend a liar who is claiming to be a Jew, a Hebrew. Okay? I am persecuting someone who calls himself a Hebrew and he is not. It is far more dangerous for someone to attribute themselves to a tribe of Israel, to Israel itself, and not being a Hebrew. Okay. Now we are grafted into the tree of the Jew, yes, in this dispensation. But to say that you're an actual Hebrew when you're not, that's far more dangerous, dear friend. Verse 8. But ye, O mountains of Israel... Ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown. And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it. And the city shall be inhabited, and the waste shall be builded. And I will multiply, you, multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So this is talking about Israel being brought back in unbelief. Well, well, Brad, how, how, how can you say being brought back in unbelief? Look at verses 24 and 25 now. For I will take you from among the heathen, and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Stop! Is idolatry still rampant in Israel? Yes. Yes. Okay. Has the Lord taken them from the heathen? Well, there are still Hebrews here in America and in your nation. There's going to come a time after, excuse me, after the redemption of the purchased possession, when the Hebraic people are going to feel that need to go to their homeland. Okay? That's going to happen, I believe, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But, so, we see people... Uh, Israel been established in its land right now. But is there a mass exodus of the Jewish people right now to go to Israel? No. No, not yet. Verse 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Question, question. Is Israel doing that today? Has he um, given them a new heart and a new spirit? If the Lord had given Israel today a new heart and a new spirit, they would be going, they would be following Jesus Christ. Their promised God, their promised king, their God, their father, the son of David, their Mashiach. Okay? If Israel were given a new heart and a new spirit, they would be of the church of the living God. They would be promoting, preaching, teaching Jesus Christ. They aren't doing that today. This is yet to come. This is future prophecy to be fulfilled. To be yet fulfilled. Okay, let's continue. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people. I will be your God. The land that I gave your fathers, the allotted um, territory of Israel, as according to the tribal um, dispersion, the tribal allotment that you read about in um, uh, uh, Joshua. 
Okay? That kind of thing. It will be allotted to them according to the tribes of Israel in the kingdom of heaven. When the Lord comes back as king, okay? When the Lord comes back as king, that's when this will be fulfilled. In the kingdom of heaven. With our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the King of the Jews, sitting on the throne at Jerusalem. Then Israel will be as it was during the time of David, allotted by the tribes with their, with their uh, king, King David, Jesus Christ, God our Father, ruling and reigning over them. And over all the world, too, by the way. Okay? That's when this will be fulfilled. All right? All right? Now, let's go to Ezekiel 37. Okay? Ezekiel 37, verses 12 on to verse 14. <clears throat> About the dry bones. Let's read verses 11 under verse 14. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and will bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And ye shall and shall put my spirit and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Now, like we said, Israel was brought back in unbelief. Yes. But the land allotted by tribe is not how Israel is today, nor during the time of Ezra, nor Nehemiah, nor during the time of Jesus, because they were still under captivity of another power. There was no king in Israel. Okay? There will be a king in Israel, though. Okay? But now, while we're in Ezekiel 37, let's read verses 16 on to verse 23. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick, and write upon it for Judah, and for the children of Israel his companions. Then take another stick, and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel his companions. See, Judah, Ephraim, Israel, see, okay? And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in my hand. Remember, after Solomon, Rehoboam, the kingdom were divided, even though allotted by tribe. There was a divided kingdom, okay, as a punishment, as a judgment, okay, because Solomon loved many strange women, the ultimate play, okay. Hence, after Solomon, see, during the reign of David and Solomon was only when Israel was truly united with Rehoboam, it got divided one, uh, with Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam had uh, Judah and Benjamin, I believe. And the rest were all with Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. The stigma associated with Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, okay? Who made calves in Dan, I believe. One in Dan and another in Samaria, okay? All right, let's continue though. Verse 17, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, What wilt thou not shew us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick. And they shall be one in mine hand. One nation in mine hand. Whose hands? God, God's hands. The Lord Jesus Christ, the son of David, king of Israel. Okay? And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, 
I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land, upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be, and one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into king, into two kingdoms any more at all. That has yet to happen. Okay, during Nehemiah and Ezra, there was no king in Israel. During the time of Jesus, they had no king but Caesar. Future prophecy to be fulfilled in the kingdom of heaven. When our Lord comes back with those of us who are redeemed, he comes back with us, okay? For the kingdom of heaven, this is prophecy yet to be fulfilled, okay? Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. There is coming a future pull of every legitimate Hebraic person, spirit's own body, to go back to Israel. That's going to come. And I believe that's going to come during the time of Jacob's trouble. But the fulfillment of having one king and a united nation of Israel is when Jesus Christ comes back at his second coming. Okay? You with me? Okay? And let's now go to Isaiah chapter 11. Just a couple of verses here. Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11 verses 10 on to verse 12. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 10 and verse 12. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day, that the Lord shall set his hand against, again, the second time, second time, second coming, to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, Shinar, the land of Babylon, okay, of Nimrod, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather the together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Okay? From the four corners of the earth. So, there's going to, while he dispersed them, there's going to be a gathering. Every real Hebraic person, spirit's own body, that's what a person is, at some time, I believe during the time of Jacob's trouble, because that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to go forth conquering and to conquer. He himself is going to be a Jew. And if you haven't figured it out by now, Satan hates the Hebraic people just like Satan hates those of us of the Church of the Living God. Satan hates the true Jews. Why do you think he's so busy trying to, uh, raising up people like Mark the Messenger saying that he's a Jew and he's not? Satan hates the Hebraic people. Satan hates the church of the living God. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, that man of sin, the son of perdition, erroneously referred to as the Antichrist, okay, um, he's going to be a Hebrew. He's going to be a Hebrew. And his visage, as I believe, thank you, brother, is going to, in his visage, resemble that of the Roman Catholic Jesus. Okay? I had to be more clear about that because my brother, a brother of mine, uh, rebuked me on it. So, okay, but he's going to be a Hebrew. That man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to be a Hebrew, and he's going to go forth conquering and conquer. And the enemy he's going to go after, he's not going to go after you Christians because you Christians are going to be thinking that that's Jesus Christ. He's going to be going after the sons of Ishmael. And that Dome of the Rock is going to be obliterated. And that's going to send all you poor Ishmaelites into a frenzy. And it won't be safe anywhere for the Hebraic people except for them to go back to their homeland. Okay? Okay. Now let's go to Ezekiel 48. Okay? 
What about these tribes? Okay. A Hebrew, watch the videos on what is a Jew. If you don't watch them, that's your problem. You're willfully ignorant and it's folly and shame onto you. And I'm not going to be kind to you, nor show you patience. Okay? If the answers are there for you in Scripture and you don't want to take the time to search the Scriptures yourself, I got no time for you. None. And I'm not going to be too polite. Because that's lazy. You want your ears itched and tickled. But Ezekiel chapter 48, verses 1 on verse 8. What are the tribes of Israel? Now, you're going to notice some differences here. Now, these are the names of the tribes from the north end to the coast of the way of Hethlon, as one goeth to Hamath, Hazar Enon, the border of Damascus, Damascus northward, to the coast of Hamath. For these are his sides, east and west, a portion for Dan. By the border of Dan, from the east side onto the west side, a portion for Ashur. And by the border of Ashur, Ashur, excuse me, from the east side even onto the west side, a portion for Naphtali. And by the border of Naphtali, from the east side onto the west side, a portion for Manasseh. And by the border of Manasseh, from the east side onto the west side, a portion for Ephraim. Now, you got to remember, Ephraim and Manasseh were adopted into Israel, taking the two places, one for Joseph and one for Levi, because Levi didn't have his own territory. But Levi, as the priests of the Lord, had their territories within the territories of the tribes of Israel. Okay? You can read about that in the Torah. Okay? All right? So, Levi didn't have their own, like, this is the land of Levi. It was within, like, say, the land of Gad or Ashur, okay? That's what it was. And Joseph, his lineage was of two Manasseh of Ephraim. That's why in this you don't see Joseph. Let's continue, okay? And by the border of Ephraim, from the east side on to even on to the west side, a portion for Reuben. And by the border of Reuben, from the east side on to the west side, a portion for Judah. And by the border of Judah, from the east side unto the west side, shall be the offering which ye shall offer five and twenty thousand reeds in breadth and in length as one of the other parts from the east side unto the west side. And the sanctuary shall be in the midst of it. And then it talks about how the, the Levi, the priests of Levi, will have their allotments within the tribes. Okay? Now, let's go to verses 23 on to verse 28. Okay? Let's get, we're at 7. Okay. As for the rest of the tribes, from the east side unto the west side, Benjamin shall have a portion. And from the border of Benjamin, from the east side unto the west side, Samaian shall have a portion. And from the border of Samaian, from the east side unto the west side, Issachar a portion. And by the border of Issachar, from the east side unto the west side, Zebulun, a portion. And by the border of Zebulun, from the east side unto the west side, Gad, a portion. Okay? And from the border of Gad, at the south side southward, the border shall be even from Tamar unto the waters of Strife and Kadesh, and to the river toward the great sea. Verse 29. This is the land which ye shall divide by lot unto the tribes of Israel for inheritance, and these are their portions, saith the Lord God. Okay? The tribes of Israel are 12. Okay? Levi didn't have a portion of specifically Levi. Theirs was intermingled within. Joseph's uh, representative were two, Manasseh and Ephraim. Ephraim, who was the younger, was set above the firstborn, which was Manasseh. Okay? All right? That's why you don't see Joseph in this. All right? But 12. 12 tribes. All descended from the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Abraham was taken out of the kindred of Shem. Not Ham, which are the, uh, the African region. Not Japheth, not the Europeans but of Shem, tent dwellers. 
the Asiatics. Okay? Do you understand? All right? Now, let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew. We're going to look at the times when tribes appear in the New Testament. Now, you got to remember, before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. Doctrinally, it was still the Old Testament. The law was still binding. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. If you don't, you become a heretic devil like Mark the Messenger. Okay? Plain and simple. But Mark the, uh, Matthew chapter 19, verses 23 on to verse 30. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven. When you see kingdom of heaven in the book of Matthew, Matteo, okay? When you see the kingdom of heaven mentioned in the book of Matthew, it is always a reference unto the physical kingdom in Jerusalem with our Lord Jesus Christ ruling and reigning as king, the son of David. Every time. Kingdom of God can be a reference unto the kingdom of heaven, but mostly it's the spiritual kingdom of God. And that's defined by context. Okay? You've got to search the scriptures. Different. Let's continue. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Um, that's not hyperbole. Um, a camel cannot go through the eye of a needle. It's impossible. So our Lord is saying it's impossible for a rich man to enter. Now note the difference there. Note the difference. Were you paying attention? Let's read verses 23 and 24 again. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. The actual physical kingdom. Hardly. Okay? It's a lot harder for these rich people who have money because they become self-sufficient instead of Christ-dependent. Okay? Okay? Kingdom of heaven. You see that? Don't look at me. Look at the scriptures. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, and that cannot happen, than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Do you see that? You see that? Now, is that also a reference unto the kingdom of heaven, the physical? No. No, it's not. It doesn't make sense. No. It's a reference unto the spiritual. Okay? Why is that? Because the rich people, especially today, who have, you know, their flowing ministries and their mansions with their yachts and their pools and their multitude of cars and all this stuff, and they're, they're self-sufficient. They're self-sufficient. They're relying on their goods rather than the Lord themselves. So, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And the eye of a needle a camel go through? He's speaking literally there. Uh, it's easier for a camel to go through the uh, an, an eye of a needle. And look, that can't happen. Then for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. But he gives hope with this. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So even though he says that in verse 24 about a rich man entering the kingdom of God, the spiritual, he still says, With men it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. And it will usually take that rich man losing everything. Just like the rich young ruler who was told to get rid of everything and then come and follow Jesus, but he went away because he had so many riches. Yeah. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Look at this. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory in the kingdom of heaven after his second coming. Okay? Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones.
thrones. Don't look at me. Look at the scriptures. Judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, there are technically four. No. 12 tribes. You do not see anywhere in scripture or in a Bible, for that matter, the 14 tribes of Israel. It's always 12. It's always 12. Okay. Never 14. What? Ye have God said? Well, let's keep reading. But they will be judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So the tribes are to return. Right? But see, the tribes are scattered right now. But see, are they lost? No. Uh, the Lord knows where they are. Do we know where they are? No, not per se, but we do know that there are Hebrews within our vicinity. And hence, when you talk to a Hebraic person, uh, most of the time when you uh, ask them, they can find out from what tribe they descend. Okay? They are dispersed. They're not recognized by their tribes. And this is where Satan comes in with Yehudah hath God said, and you have someone making a comment, we're just now finding out who the lost tribes are. That's not true. There is no such thing as a lost tribe. The 12 tribes of Israel are all Hebrews come out of Shem, descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's no question. There is no such thing as a lost tribe of Israel. That's satanic. That's yea hath God said. There's no such thing, dear friend. No such thing as a lost tribe. Okay? You have the scriptures. You, Some of you, you even have a Bible. You can find out who are the 12 tribes. Individually? Okay, you meet a Jew today. Do you know individually what tribe he is of? No. No, you don't. Can they find out? Yes. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. They can. They can. Okay? But Israel is not associated today under tribal, under the tribals thing. Not today. But there will be. There will be. But see, there is no confusion. The 12 tribes are, number one, Hebrews. Hebrews are taken out of the descendants of Shem. And the father of the Hebraic people are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hebrew first appears with Abram. Look for yourself. Okay? Not with anyone of Ham. Not with anyone of Japheth. Okay? All right? So that allotment of the 12 tribes is coming. But see, the 12 tribes are Hebrews. And they're Israel. And we know what tribes they are. There's no such thing as a lost tribe of Israel. There is no such thing, dear friend. And uh, Luke 22, verse 30, just one, just one verse. Luke 22, verse 30. Luke 22, verse 30. Just one verse. Just one verse. My fingers will get there. I don't care how long this is going to go. This is going to go. Luke 22, verse 30. All right, again, the Lord talking to his 12 apostles, his 12 disciples that he had the, the Last Supper with. Uh, verse 30, uh, verse 29 and 30. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And some will, well, what about Judas? Judas fell. Yeah, but who took Judas's place? Paul did. Paul did. Okay? Now, while we're here, let's go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Verses 29 on to verse 31. Matthew chapter 24. Oh, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. 
Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. For today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, this has nothing to do for us today doctrinally, for us today of the church of the living God. Okay? This is describing the time of Jacob's trouble. The church of the living God, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, the redemption of the purchased possession, erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture, okay? The redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, that happens. This has nothing to do with us today, doctrinally. Nothing. Nothing. It's about the time of Jacob's trouble, time of Israel's trouble, the Jews, the Hebraic people, not the Hamites, not the Japhethites, not even those of Shem, but those that are called out of Shem, the Hebraic people, whose fathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Okay? Got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 on to verse 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Look at that. After the tribulation of those days. After the tribulation of those days. Do you see the word great there? Huh? Come on. No, you don't. It's describing, this is describing the time of Jacob's trouble. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the time of Jacob's trouble, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, the second coming, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. All the tribes of the earth mourn. So now is this a reference on to specifically the 12 tribes of Israel? No, because it all the tribes of the earth. You got to remember that during the time of Jacob's trouble, that man of sin, the son of perdition, who eventually will be Satan himself. Okay, I believe after he is wounded with an incurable wound and then comes back to life. Okay? Son of perdition. The sap. Okay? But, got to remember, Satan, through that man of sin, the son of perdition, Satan is going to inhabit that man of sin, the son of perdition, eventually. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Like I said, I believe after he has gotten the wound and says, and everyone, who can make war with the beast? That he's going to go forth conquering and to conquer. World War II, World War I, all the world wars until that time are going to be nothing. The wake and destruction that that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to cause on this world after the redemption of the purchased possession is beyond our fathoming. We can't fathom it. And I believe that this tribal thing is going to be not only the 12 tribes, but also for the tribes of the Gentiles. Yes, I absolutely believe that. Because there's going to be such a destructive wake left in the aftermath of, the son, of that man of sin, the son of perdition, that the world that you now know is going to be disfigured. The economies are going to be totally destroyed during the time of Jacob's trouble. We'll see collapsing economies in this dispensation, yes, but nothing like during the time of Jacob's trouble. Not even gold and silver are going to be able to help you during the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not even going to help you today. The American economy collapses. How are they going to guess the exchange rate if you take a wedge of gold or, or a troy ounce or whatever of silver or gold to Walmart? How, how, no, get real. Get real. No, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the economies are going to be destroyed. The mark of the beast is going to be implemented. The world as we know it now is nothing like you're going to see for those of you who get left behind. That's why you need to get saved now so you can be redeemed. You need to get away from devils like Mark the Messenger who's lying to you. Okay? Now let's continue. Now verse 31. There are those out there and even the great Peter Ruckman 
taught, uh, I think, taught this. That there are two raptures. And this is where they go. Uh, the Lord had me to do a video on the two raptures. There's only one redemption of the purchased possession. There's only one time in all of recorded history where God is going to say, Come up hither! That's the redemption of the purchased possession. God says, Come up hither! In the twinkling of an eye, we, the church of the living God, we get caught up. That's the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? About Enoch, it never says in Scripture that God said to Enoch, Come up hither! All it says of Enoch is that he walked with God and then he was no more. It doesn't say that God said to Enoch, come up hither. You might get that from that tripe, the book of Enoch, which is not scripture where these people come up with the stuff about the Nephilim. Okay, Nephilim, by the way, does not appear in scripture. Okay, it doesn't. All right. And uh, the line of Cain, the Nephilim died during the flood. Okay, could an angel, say, an angel of Satan, lie with a, a female of mankind today? Yes, yes, that's possible. But we're not warned in Scripture that that happens after the flood. You hear about the remnant of the giants. Okay, you do giants and people who are ten foot tall. Oh, it is surmised that he was at least ten to twelve foot tall. Okay. All right. And uh, Goliath had six fingers and six toes on each hand and foot. OK. Uh, he had five fingers and or, or two toes or whatever. I know some of you get technical about that. But the remnant of the giants, there is absolutely no scriptural proof that the giants that are talked about after the flood are descended from these so-called Nephilim that is talked about in Genesis chapter 6. There is no scriptural evidence to support that. None whatsoever. you got to remember, the line of Cain died in the flood. Okay? All right? But the two rapture thing, they come to this. Let's read verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great shout of a trumpet, and they, the angels, shall gather together his elect, the Hebraic people, from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. Verse 31 is not a second redemption of the purchased possession. He say, There's a the sound of a trumpet, and the angels go and get the Hebraic people and bring them in. The redemption of the purchased possession is, Come up hither! Okay? The two rapture thing is nonsense. This is not a redemption of the purchased possession. Jesus himself is not saying come up hither, but he's sending his angels, us who go up with him, out. Not two raptures. That's ridiculous. Okay? That's ridiculous. There's no such thing. All right? Scripture is against that. Let's continue. Now, all right. No, well, that was 31. Yeah, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. It's not a second redemption of the purchase possession. Because he's not saying come up hither. Okay, be careful with that. Okay? But there again you see tribes. Because that man of sin, son of perdition, going forth, conquering and to conquer, he's going to leave a, a wake of destruction. That's what he's going to do. Okay, that's what I believe. Okay, that's what I believe. Okay, and let's go to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 on to verse 28. Um, this thing, again, now, the lost sheep, the lost tribes, there is no such thing as the lost tribes of Israel. But there's this. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 on to verse 28. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon, behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the of the same coast and cried unto him. Now note, she was from Canaan. She wasn't a Hebrew. She wasn't a Jew. And cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. 
as a Gentile. Son of David. Jesus is the son of David, meaning his kingship. But we as Gentiles don't refer to Jesus as the son of David. Because he is, he is the God of all flesh, Lord of lords, King of kings. But that is something that is served just for the Hebraic Jewish people. Because you'll see the one guy and the other reference when the blind guy says, uh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stops. Stops. When he hears a Hebrew call him Jesus, thou son of David. But see, a Gentile, especially at this time when he's offering the kingdom of heaven, the physical, literal kingdom, unto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay, let's continue. Have mercy on me, Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. He didn't even answer her. didn't even acknowledge her. Because as a Gentile, especially in this time, referring to Jesus as the son of David, that was specifically for the Hebraic Jewish people. He is the son of David. Yes, he is. Lord of lords, king of kings. Yes, he is. But this context, a, Jew, a Gentile woman referred to him as the son of David, but he never, he ignored her. A blind beggar of the tribes, uh, one of the tribes of the Jews, a Hebrew, a blind man said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And he stops proving that. Okay? And look what he says. And this, is, and this is what it is. This is why devils like Mark the Messenger and those devil uh, Brizraelites, thank you, brother, the Brizraelites, British, Hebrew, Israelites, okay, Usually descended from Catholic origin. Oh, go figure that. Yeah, go figure that. Okay. This is what they can't stand. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And Satan comes in. Yet hath God said, who are the lost sheep of Israel? What is a Jew? What is true Israel? Right? We've already established what Israel is. But see, Satan comes in. Yea, hath God said. What is a Hebrew? What is a Jew? What is truly Israel? And there is scripturally no confusion. You just want to believe a lie. You just want to have your ears tickled. You want to hear smooth things, saying because of the mere color of your skin, that gives you an inroad with God. Who you, who you think you are? Who you think you are? But he answered and said, I am not law, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep. Doesn't say lost tribes, lost sheep. Yea, hath God said, there are lost tribes. No, there isn't. Lost tribes of Israel, no such thing. They're not lost. God knows exactly where they are. We don't know maybe who individually belongs to what tribe. True, but the tribes are not lost. There is no such thing. We know that the tribes are of are Hebrews and that they are of Israel. And we know that there are 12 of them. Okay? There's no confusion here. Satan is the author of confusion, not God the Father. Okay? And let's keep, let's keep reading. Verse 26. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it Two dogs. Ooh. You don't like that, do you? You know what the Lord just said there? He referred to Gentiles as dogs. Oh, you're a sweet little bro hug, lovey dovey Jesus, who doesn't judge anyone, who's not, who doesn't get angry, huh? who loves you unconditionally. Who never said anything about killing uh, children? Who uh, killing children or killing people with death in the Book of Revelation? You know the red words in Revelation. 
you 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 throw the red words at these red word Christians of Revelation, you'll you'll see the deer in the headlights look similar to Mark the Messenger. Okay, yeah. It's not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the cast it to dogs. You don't like that, do you? See, salvation is of the Jew. And a Jew is a Hebrew. A Hebrew is descended of Shem, whose fathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, taken out of Shem. Not Ham, not Japheth. So he's saying there, it's not me to take the children's bread, the children of Israel, the Hebraic people, and cast it to the dogs, those who are not Hebrews. You don't like that. You don't like that, do you? No, because you want to believe that you're a special one. You want to believe that you're elect. Right? Or you're chosen. Well, if you're not chosen, then never mind. Chosen, not chosen. Elect, non-elect. A variation of that satanic, <coughs> wicked Calvinism. Elect and non-elect. Esoteric. Exoteric. Yeah. You want to believe you're special. Because you're black. You're special. You're one of the chosen ones. Or you're from England. God saved the king. God save you. <laughs> God saved the king. You're one of the special ones, right? I don't like that. So you take offense to it. And then you come around and say, well, yeah, who, who can say? It's, it's, it's similar to, well, what is a woman? What is a man? Yea, hath God said. See, God has clearly said in the scripture what a Jew, what a Hebrew is, what the 12, 12 tribes are. But Satan comes along, yea, hath God said. And here we are today. Here we have to dedicate over uh, 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 an hour and 52 minutes saying something that if anyone was a Berean and searched the scriptures and rightly divided the word of truth would have been like, uh, well, yeah, we know that. This, this ignorance of the scripture is the fruit of Mark the Messenger and those like him. That's the fruit. Not rightly dividing, contrary to the doctrine that is pertinent for today, and calling God a liar. That's the fruit. That's the fruit of Mark the Messenger. And I've witnessed it in all his disciples who defend him. You poor, deceived dolts! Hey, you hear this? You give it your time, and you're like, wow, the scriptures are right. And you get away from him, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. But you watch nine minutes and say, don't judge, you're a fool. You can fix ignorance. You can't fix stupid. And look at this, verse 27. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And look at what the Lord says. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. See, there is a place for the Gentiles. Okay? Now, let's go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 26. We're almost done. Acts chapter 26. Now, like we have looked at at the beginning of this video, tribe in the Pauline epistles, and that's significance, only appears twice. And that's Paul referring to himself. Okay? Of the tribe of Benjamin. A, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Okay? But tribes, plural, doesn't appear at all in the Pauline epistles. Why is that? But first, let's go to Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. 
We want verses uh, 1 on to verse 7. Paul standing before Agrippa. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered it for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I would live the Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise are twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews, which should, why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Hmm. There's another reference of tribes. The tribes of who? Of Israel, the Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel. No such thing as a lost tribe. And you also got to remember too, dear brethren, dear friend, that God, well, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32 real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 32, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 32. Because remember how we already looked about all the tribes of the earth? Remember how we looked at that? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 6 on to verse 9. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he, shall, and he will shew thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. According to the number of the children of Israel. So... The, the bounds and number of the other nations are in correlation with the number of the tribes of Israel? Of the number of the children of Israel? Hmm, interesting. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Jacob. What is Jacob? Israel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Out of Shem. There's no such thing as a lost tribe, dear friend. No such thing. That's satanic. God knows where they are. Individually, okay, we might not know which Jew belongs on to which tribe, but we know that they are Hebrews, descended of Shem. Their fathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we know that there are 12 of the tribes of Israel. Listen to me. A Hamite cannot be a Hebrew, nor can a Japhethite be a Hebrew. It doesn't matter if you have three-tenths blood of Hebraic blood in you. A Hamite is not a Hebrew. A Japhethite is not a Hebrew. All of Shem are not Hebrews. But those that descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Prove it to you. Watch the videos, what is a Jew? You don't want to watch it and say, don't judge? Go to hell then. Go to hell then with your little guy, with your little Mark the Messenger who's deceiving you. Okay? You don't want to search the scriptures? You hate absolute truth? Then go to hell. Then go to hell. And have your best life now as one of the chosen ones. Brad, that was mean. You, you, you're right. You're right. If you want to, you can fix ignorance. But if you're if you're willingly ignorant, don't want to know better, you're stupid, and you can't fix stupid. Is that a, take offense, take offense to that, and take a gate as well. You are willfully ignorant, don't want to know better, you're stupid. You're stupid. 
Okay? Deal with that. All right. And while we're at it, let's go to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, verses 24 on to verse 28. Okay? God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. <laughs> yeah. Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything. God doesn't need us. We need him. Okay? Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Yes, even you wicked devils. You're alive, you have light behind your eyes because the Lord has given you life. You have breath because the Lord has given it to you. Okay? And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitations. Yeah. And hath made, okay, that they should seek the Lord if haply they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live. Yes, you're alive because the Lord has allowed it. Okay? And move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Now that doesn't mean that someone who doesn't come to the Lord on his terms is his offspring, but what that means is you're alive today, it's because the Lord has allowed it. Okay? This lunacy, that there are lost tribes. It's lunacy. It's a lie. There is no such thing as a lost tribe of Israel. Okay? We know what the tribes are. We know what the tribes are. And we know what construct those tribes. Hebrews, Jacob, Israel, of Shem, out of Shem, from the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shem, not Ham or Japheth. There is no lost tribe. None. It's a lie. But see, now, like I mentioned, there's no mention of tribes in the Pauline epistles for the doctrine for today. And like I said, during the time of Jesus, Israel was not allotted, divided by tribe as it will be during the kingdom of heaven or as it was before during the reign of David and Solomon and even in, uh, of the time of Rehoboam, okay? And it was one kingdom under David and Solomon and there were 12 tribes allotted uh, during the two kingdoms but they were separate, not one. So technically, it was only under David and Solomon and will be again under the son of David King of the Jews, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. We know what the tribes are. But why is there no mention today of tribes? Why? Even though culturally, like I've said, I've met many a Hebrew who are, I, you, do you happen to know what tribe you're from? Like I said, yeah, I know I'm, I'm, I descend from, my descendants are of Naphtali. And the one rabbi, I'm, my descendants are of Levi. Okay, and the one of Gad and uh, one of Samaian, and I've met several who have claimed to be of the tribe of Judah and they can trace their lineage back in scripture. Okay, that's, that's something that the true Hebraic people are able to do and do. Okay, why do you think Paul makes a big deal? It's like, don't worry about genealogies today. Well, culturally is one thing. We're talking about salvation. See, for someone to say that only the elect are saved, when God would have all men to be saved, so then the select tribe of the elect or chosen ones, it doesn't work that way. Why doesn't Paul make mention of tribes? Even though he references tribe in regards to himself being of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrew. But why is there no mention of tribes? I'll tell you why. You have to, what happened? First of all, what happened? The death, burial, and resurrection happened. Okay? Salvation is of the Jew. John chapter 4. Okay? And the kingdom of heaven was offered on to the Jew. They rejected it. The kingdom of God, spiritual, was first offered on to the Jew. 
They rejected it as a nation. But see, after the death, burial, and resurrection, the dispensation that is now began by grace through faith. Okay? Not keeping the works of the law. Okay? We don't have to keep the works of the law today to be saved, stay saved, or be right with God. Prove that in many videos. If you don't want to watch it, that's your problem. Okay? But the proof is out there. You don't want to hear it? Then go to hell. Okay? Go to hell. Go away. All right? You want to know the truth? It's there for you to have. Okay? But we don't keep the law today. With the death, burial, and resurrection brought in this dispensation that we are right now in. you got to rightly divide the word of truth. What happened? Well, Romans chapter 11 is the perfect synopsis of what happens. Okay? And links will be in the description box. It's your fault if you don't want to take the time and hear the truth. It's your fault. I've done my part. I've here, that's my part. It's up to you to search the scriptures, whether these things are so. That's on you. But here's a rundown. Here's a really good rundown. What happened? Ephesians chapter 3. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if, you, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. And of course, Catholics talk, oh, the mystery, this mystery, of course, their mystery, Babylon, of course. But what is this mystery? What is this unfathomable, unheard of mystery? Let's find out which in other ages, other ages, other dispensations, we're reading Ephesians 3, verses 1 on his verse 6, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capital S Spirit, and the Lord is that Spirit. What is this mystery? Verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of the, his promise in Christ by the gospel. That us Gentiles, who our Lord referred to as dogs, were grafted into the tree of the Jew. That's the mystery. Remember in the book of Acts, how the Jews that were with Peter were astonished that when, and Cornelius is like, they got the same thing we got. And Peter's like, what can we do? Who can forbid? Water for them to be baptized. Let's do this. They, they received it just as we have. They were shocked. And water baptism isn't a requirement. That had to do with John who was baptizing them onto repentance for the kingdom of heaven. The same principle uh, was there why they were being baptized to identify them with the kingdom of God for the Jews, okay? It was this dispensation. That's why the Jews were doing it. You don't need to be baptized to be saved. That's a lie. They were only doing that for identification sakes that they were identified with the kingdom of God spiritual. Okay, that's why they were doing it. Not because it was for your salvation. Okay? Don't, don't believe the Catholics or those nutty charismatics or their X-238 or those stupid Campbellites like Phil Robinson and all them. Okay? Church of Christ. Okay? It's nonsense. It's nonsense. Okay? But that's the mystery. Us dogs, us Gentiles, grafted into the tree of the Jew. That's what happened. The death, burial, and resurrection. The law fulfilled. The law was fulfilled. Only God could do it. Why? In the blood shed on the cross, the perfect atonement for sin. It's the blood, not the flesh, you idiot. The blood that makes atonement for sin. Okay? All right? That's what happened. And in this dispensation, with the Gentiles grafted in to the tree of the Jew, we go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first. 
What's a Jew? A Hebrew. What's a Hebrew? Descended out of Shem. Descended out of Shem. Well, where's this? what started the Hebrew line? Abraham. Because the word Hebrew is associated with Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? <laughs> yeah. All right? To the Jew first and also to the Greek. A Greek, that's a Gentile. Okay? For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith and what he was going to do to faith and what he has done and is finished. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Okay, and while we're here, Romans chapter 2, verses 28 on to verse 29. This is something that a lot of you are screaming, aren't you? Uh, Romans 28, uh, Romans 2, 28 and 29. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. That circumcision... And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God. And the letter means of those who keep the law. What does this mean? This means that you don't have to keep the law today to be saved. This isn't blurring what a Jew is because we don't have to keep the law to be saved today. So what this is talking about uh, because a Jew is someone scripturally that keeps the law. We do not have to keep the law of Moses today to be saved. So what he means is inwardly, inwardly, dear people. That's what he means when he says inwardly. What is that? Uh, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Okay. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of, con of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Guys like Mark the Messenger, their confidence is in the flesh because they keep the law. And what Paul is talking about he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly keeping the law. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, who have no uh, confidence in the flesh, but are new creatures. And circumcision of, is that of the heart in the spirit, and not in the letter, referring on to the Old Testament law, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Because, well, hey, I, I keep the law, I do this, men will praise you. And what did our Lord Jesus Christ say in John chapter 4? And Paul said here in Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, For we are the circumcision which work, worship God in the spirit, lowercase s, and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. What does our Lord say in John chapter 4, verse 23? But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father, shall worship the Father in lowercase s, spirit, and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. So Romans chapter 2 there, my friend, is not blurring what a Jew is. What he's saying is, that a Jew, remember, a Jew scripturally is one who keeps the law. We don't keep the law today to be saved, to stay saved, or be right with God. That me doesn't mean that we are not without law with, uh, under Christ. You read Romans chapter 13. Okay? Okay? But we, we don't have to keep the Sabbath today. To the Jew first and also to the Greek, Gentile. You don't have to be kosher today. Okay? You don't have to observe the Jewish holidays. You don't have to observe the Jewish holidays. The, hol the holy days that Paul refers to. You closet Nazi. Okay? You don't have to do that. If you want to, go ahead. You want to be uh, stay kosher? Go ahead. Okay? You want to observe the Shabbat Saturday? Go ahead. You want to observe the... Jewish holy days, being a Gentile, I don't know why, but if you do, go ahead. It's not required for your salvation. 
Okay, it's not required for your salvation. Okay, and while we're here, Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verses 30 on to verse 33. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, the law of righteousness, okay, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, which is exactly what Mark the Messenger is teaching. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And of course, Romans chapter 10, verses 1 and 3. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 and 3. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them, and who is Israel? Jacob. Who is Jacob? Descended of Isaac and Abraham, who came out of Shem, the Hebraic line. Okay? I know I've said that a hundred times already, but I have to keep saying it for to you so you get it. This is not hard. It's right here. But see, you people don't want to search the scriptures. You're lazy. You want to have your ears tickled. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not established, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Of God. Going about to establish their own righteousness. you you got to keep the commandments. Got to keep the commandments. Once saved, always saved. Never sat right in my spirit because you're lost. You're a devil. Okay? All right? Once saved, always saved. He's against that. Against the redemption of the purchased possession. He's a kindredist. He's a kindredist. He says that black people are the chosen ones. Yeah, yeah, and but, but what happened? What happened, okay? What happened? Galatians chapter 3, okay? Galatians chapter 3, a dispensational difference. The death, burial, and resurrection. Today in this dispensation, salvifically, Galatians chapter 3, 27 on to verse 29, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, identified, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Uh, today there is definitely, no matter what these devils want to tell you, there is definitely a male and a female. There is definitely a Jew and a Greek. What is this talking about? Self-ethically. There's no difference in salvation. And heretics, like Mark the Messenger, is telling you that there is a difference in salvation. Chosen ones. And because he's black, he's a true Hebrew. He's a racist. He's a kindredist. Racist doesn't appear in scripture. He's a kindredist. Because he hates God. He hates God. And you sad people who defend him, you're either ignorant and willfully ignorant. And I'm going to tell you, if you're willfully ignorant, you're stupid. And you can't fix stupid. Only God can. Take fence. Take a gate. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Again, have videos where we talk about that. Again, if you don't, you know... I don't like giving credit to devils, but you got to give credit to where it's due. If devils, if certain devils will take the time and watch an entire video, why can't you chosen ones do the same thing? Why can't you Christians do the same thing? Why? 
Why? And Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. See, there's no significance. I mean, there's no distinction, excuse me, in salvation. A Hebrew who is a Jew, according to Scripture, a Gentile of Japheth, Ham, or even of Shem. Remember, a Jew, according to Scripture, is one who keeps the law. And we looked at the very beginning, onto the Hebraic people, the Jewish people, the law was given. Okay, the Hebrews. Okay, so there are those who are of Shem that are Gentiles. Really? Yeah, like the Chinese, Japanese. They're of Shem, but they're not of the Hebraic people, where he, the Hebrews came out of. Okay, but Colossians chapter 3, verses 8 on to verse 13. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. What does that mean? That means God elected the way of the cross. God did not elect the Calvinists. God did not elect the black people. God did not elect the white people. Okay? God did not elect the Asiatic people. He elected the way of the cross. And the elected people of the Hebrew, he took out of Shem. So, as the elect of God means that you went the way that he elected for this dispensation. This is, this is nuts and bolts. This is kid stuff. Which you are not being taught. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Finish the verse, Mark. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, if you people who are deceived by that devil... If you people would rightly divide the word of truth, you would right away see that Mark the Messenger is full of horse manure. And then he'd lose his Christian ministry business, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he? I've seen the fruit of Mark the Messenger. And it says, don't judge. And wants nothing to do with absolute truth. They can't endure sound doctrine. Mark the messenger, disciples cannot endure strong, cannot endure sound doctrine. Sorry, my friend. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And let's go to James chapter 1. James, which is written for the Hebraic Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Prove it to you. Absolutely. Who is the book of James written to? Okay. James chapter 1. Verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes. There's no lost tribe, son which are scattered abroad. Greeting. There's no such thing as a lost tribe. Those 12 tribes are scattered. But see, the Hebrews that you will meet are a part of one of these 12 tribes. Individually, you might not know what tribe they are associated to. But we know that, number one, they are of the 12 tribes of Israel and that they are Hebraic Jews, Hebrews, taken from Shem, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? So, there is no mystery. There is no such thing as a lost tribe. Okay? Okay? Alright? And the book of James is written for the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Greetings. It's written, written for the, the Hebraic people. And, then, and you read James chapter 2. Okay? More fruit of people who do not rightly divide the word of truth. Um, it's written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Which are? I am not of Japheth, which Mark the Messenger is not of Ham. 
Okay, it's impossible. Okay, okay. Now, Revelation chapter 7. We're almost done. Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 on verse 8. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Now, this is the time of Jacob's trouble. This has nothing to do with us today. Okay? We, the church of the living God, are redeemed in um, uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. And I looked, and beheld, a door was opened in heaven, and the door is Jesus Christ, you stupid idiot. That was for a select individual, a Brizraelite. Yeah. A door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. Come up hither. That's the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? That's when we, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, are redeemed, taken out before the time of Jacob's trouble. The church of the living God is not on the earth during the book of Revelation. Christians are, and you who get left behind, you know, keeping the Sabbath, you know, today to be saved, and you guys who say don't judge, you Christians, you're going to be during, uh, you're going to be in the time of Jacob's trouble, which you call the Great Tribulation, and that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to refer to you as Christians. You watch, and I bet you that man of sin, the son of perdition. I just bet you he's going to claim that he was born on December 25th. <laughs> I'm going to come out with something on that before those two idiots come out with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, the closet Nazi and the little jerk. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to come out with something before they do, just so you know. Okay, but back to Revelation chapter 7. Verses 1 on to verse 8. Excuse me. I was reading the... Uh, what was it? Uh, Revelation chapter 7. One second, please. Revelation chapter 7. I was uh, reading the wrong one. Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 8. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And see, during this dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble, there is no eternal security except for these who are sealed. Of the Hebraic people, the tribes of the Jews, you're going to notice something here. Check this out. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And they were sealed on 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asir were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun, Zebulun was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin was sealed 12,000. Now these are of the tribes that were sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. Have you noticed two tribes that were not mentioned there? But there were 12 of them mentioned there, but two were not there. Which ones? Dan and Ephraim were not mentioned. Dan and Ephraim were the only tribes that had no one sealed until the day, until uh, in this time period. Why is that? Well, for Dan, you read the book of Joshua. Okay? You read about the thing with the Danites. Okay? The children of Dan. Okay, I believe that's in the book of Dan. Yes. Yes, uh, Dan. Yes, you read that about uh, Dan, how they set up the idol and that was there for the until the captivity. Okay, also in the book of Ben, uh, you read of Joshua, or excuse me, in the book of Judges. 
Excuse me, in the book of Judges, you read about Benjamin, but also in the book of Judges, you read about Dan, okay, the Danites, okay, and also Ephraim, read the book of Hosea, read the book of Hosea. Some like to argue, well, Ephraim is really talking about the whole of Israel. In context, yes, but in the whole of the book, it's about the tribe of Ephraim. Yes, yes, Ephraim. So Ephraim, you read the book of Hosea, and the book, and Dan, the book of Judges. And you'll see why Dan, I believe why Dan and Ephraim are not part of those that are sealed in Revelation chapter 7. Okay, but now let's go to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. Okay, this is after the great white throne of judgment. After Satan, after sin has been eliminated and cast into the lake of fire. After that, I believe and preach and teach the seventh and final dispensation, eternity. God rested on the seventh day. I believe that the sixth dispensation is the kingdom of heaven because Jesus Christ is going to rule as man over the earth. Okay, that's what I believe, preach and teach. And the seventh dispensation, the final one, is, eternal, is eternity with no sin. Revelation 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And of course, you can reference this in Isaiah chapter 65, verses 14 and 17, and Isaiah 66, 19 and 22, about the new heavens and the new earth, okay? But now let's go to verses 21 on to verse 27 here in Revelation chapter 21. And the 12 gates of this new Jerusalem were 12 pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. That's a big pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. Gold so pure that you can see through it. Wow. And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Now look at verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved. Stop. In eternity there will be nations. Saved nations. Yes, there will be. Yes, there will be. Yes, there will be. The nations, okay, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Okay? And the gates of it shall be shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. Okay? And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh an abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Okay? And this is also a reference on to, now see, during the kingdom of heaven, the 12 tribes are going to be reestablished. Okay? But then Satan is going to be let loose. Then he's going to be just, uh, beaten. And then sin, death, and hell are going to be cast in the lake of fire. No more. The 12 tribes are going to be established. But there are also going to be other nations besides those 12 tribes in this time period. In eternity. We just read about it. We just read about it. Okay? The new heavens and the new earth. Okay? And, we, and let's go to Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. Now this is more talking about the uh, kingdom of heaven. Okay, but this is something we have to remember. Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9, verses 11 on to verse 15. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, 
and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. In the kingdom of heaven, that's talking about the tabernacle of David, the son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ, ruling as king. The kingship of Jesus is not going to end. Okay? All right? That's where some of get confused about the dispensational thing, I believe. But, um, yeah, once Christ comes back, he's here. But there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Okay, but let's continue. And in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. So the 12 tribe allotment, as you see in scripture during the days of David and Solomon, is going to return during the kingdom of heaven and continue on to eternity. Then that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name. Saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman, and this is what it's going to be like in the kingdom of heaven. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. It's going to be farming during the kingdom of heaven. This technology as we enjoy today is not going to be there. Okay? And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof, and shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. The fulfillment within the kingdom of heaven, which carries over into eternity. It's going to be farming. No genetically modified this or that. No terra farming. No nothing like that. Pure laborers. Digging, farming, planting. Yes. And of course, Zechariah chapter 14, and then we will be done. Zechariah chapter 14, verses 16 on to verse 21. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. See, there are going to be nations left that survive when our Lord comes back. And there are going to be nations, which we just saw in Revelation chapter 21, uh, there are going to be nations left after Satan goes, is let loose out of his prison after a thousand years and then is cast back into the lake of fire for eternity. There are going to be nations left that survive that. Okay? And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Again, showing you that they're in the kingdom of heaven, which this is specifically talking about. But this carries over into eternity. Okay, this carries over. Okay, even in the new heavens and the new earth. Okay, even in the new heaven and the new earth. Okay, but this shows us that, and it shall come to pass that, that whosoever, that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, even the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. No rain, no food. No food, no survival, because it will be a farming society, a farming agricultural thing. Okay? And the family of Egypt, and if the family of Egypt go not up, and come not, that have no rain, Egypt associated with Ham, there shall be the plague. Wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Feast of Tabernacles. One of the holy days of scripture under the law. The law is going to return. Yes. Not with the sacrifices of animals for sin because the Lord's going to be there. But the keeping of sacrifice. It's going to return. Okay. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of of all nations that come not up and keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seethe therein. And in that day there shall be no more Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts.
There is no such thing as a lost tribe, dear friend. That is a lie. That is heresy. That is satanic. That is the work of Satan. That is, yea, hath God said. There are those out there calling themselves Jews, and they are not. You need to be aware of these people. Now, we have proved through absolute truth, the scriptures, that this thing of the lost tribes is a lie. There is no such thing. If you don't want to hear this truth, if you're going to answer a matter before you hear it, it is folly and shame unto you. But then again, that's the fruit of those of you who are deceived by Mark the Messenger, who is a liar and a deceiver and deceiving many people on the hell. There is no such thing as a lost tribe of Israel. There is no such thing. You are deceived. So, that's going to be it for this video. Rather long, this video. But this was a very big subject that needed to be addressed in this way. If you don't want to hear this, but be willfully ignorant, choosing not to know better, you're stupid. Sorry to say it to you like that, but you need to hear that. You can fix ignorant, but you can't fix stupid. Thank you for watching this if you do. I love you. Please consider these things. Many false prophets are out there deceiving you. It's a little bit more simple than they say. I'm going to get this uploaded watching this if you do. I love you. We'll see you in the next video.